<音楽>こんにちは桜井正弘です今回メイドイン俺というものが出てきましてプチゲームを作ることになりましたどうもこれが一番最初のプロジェクトソラの作品になるらしいんですけれども一つご期待くださいよろしくお願いしますメイドイン俺ということで、えー、例えば移動操作とか何かを狙うとかそういうものは一切なしにワンタッチの1タイミングだけっていうことにこだわって作ってみましたその割には、えー、いろいろな役物が変わったりしてランダム性はあると思いますぜひ遊んでみてくださいよろしくお願いします Wow, we, I gotta say, with the Switch doing so phenomenally in year one, year two just has to just blow the doors off of everything. <laughs> January hit, and it was a interesting month. It seemed like Nintendo, after using all of its bullets, pretty much left January open to its indie developers. And you had NBA Playgrounds, which messed up because it wasn't NBA Jam. In my personal opinion, Celeste and Super Meat Boy were the standouts for this month. These games being fantastic, and even Celeste going as so as far as being nominated for an award at the Game Awards. February rolls around with a very modest affair. A couple of games to really think about here is Bayonetta 1 and Bayonetta 2 showing up for the Switch. Yes, Nintendo decided to bring over its finest trouser arouser. No, not this trouser arouser, this one. I'm in a boner. I was very glad to see a game like Bayonetta make it over to a Nintendo console, and even more glad to see Bayonetta 2 be rescued by Nintendo. Yeah, simple fun fact if Bayonetta 2 wasn't adopted by Nintendo and made an exclusive, then Bayonetta probably would have been relegated to obscurity. And that's something that she definitely does not deserve. With a fun story, fun characters, spectacular gameplay, and over the top controls, with an even more over the top main character, gotta say, she's a bad. <laughs> Moving right along, it was very odd for SteamWorld Dig to be released right after SteamWorld Dig 2. I guess this is assuming that people already have the game, and I figure、ah, if we bring the other one over, why not just bring the first one over? Night in the Woods is yet another game that I've been meaning to check out, and I just can't seem to find the time for. Payday 2 makes an appearance, and Dandara, which is a very interesting game to me, and if you haven't played this game, I would consider picking it up if you haven't. March had rolled around, and there were even more indie titles for me to never get to. I remember people talking about Malaka, and I always wanted to try it out, and I've seen it on sale a couple of times. It's another game that is on my hit list. I ended up buying Paper Wars, and it has just sat there forever since. Maybe I'll get to it, maybe I won't. On the flip side of that statement, it's good to see Scribble Knots find his leggings on the Switch. The first one, not so good. This one, I think, uh. Wait, was this the bad one? I can't remember. It's kind of forgettable. It's great to see Bleed 2 find its legs on the Switch as well. This is an old, old, old game. I think this dates back to even Newgrounds, but it's always nice to see old games like that make a, make a comeback and, and find its legs on the Switch. Attack on Titan 2 was actually ported over to the Switch, and I know this is the inferior version of it, but I gotta say, even though I stopped playing it when I was playing it and doing Let's Plays of it, I legitimately had fun playing the game. Like, I love the feel of. of <laughs> it, it simula- it, it's a fantastic Spider Man simulator. And if you have no idea what Attack on Titan is, think Spider Man fighting giants with really sharp box cutters. Really big box cutters. There we go. Please don't demonetize me, YouTube. I see your trigger finger. I know it's ready, YouTube. Kirby Star Allies also dropped, which was okay. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a Kirby game, so I don't expect it to be challenging, but it, it was just too easy. It was fun, it was simple, it was cute, but God, it was so basic. Co op multiplayer was a blast. I just wish it was harder. It wasn't anything clever, wasn't anything challenging. It's not bad, it's enjoyable, but you know, it's pretty forgettable. The free updates were great, and I hear that the updates had added more to it. 
I'm past it now. I may go back to it because, you know, I give respect where respect is due. You gave me free updates. Also started that month, if I'm not mistaken. Nintendo started doing its points reward system. And, ooh, you got to spend a lot to get those points back. And I definitely know from experience. April rolled around and look at that $70 to $80 cardboard. Look, I, I know Nintendo Labo gets a very bad rap, and to be fair, a lot of the criticism is very valid. But to me, I'd say the whole Labo experience is more about bonding with family to build things, and after that, there's really nothing else to do. Uh, but I think it's more of the journey rather than the destination, because once you're done with them, you're just going to set them up somewhere. Me personally, if I could afford them, I would just keep them. I'd have them as collector's item. I think they're pretty neat. I'd say these would have been great, actually, you know, uh, for schools and teaching. I think that'd be a very good idea for Labo. Nothing else of importance really came out this month. I, I made the mistake of getting Gal Gun. Just, I tried to indulge myself and it was a mistake. Giggity giggity, giggity goo. Stick around. So nothing else really came out of importance this month. Sorry to the other indie games out there that I missed. I just missed a lot of it. I think Saturday Morning RPG was one of them. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of good ones that came out, but it's a lot of you guys, and it adds up. I wish I could. I wish I could. Feel free to send me a review copy. I got you. May rolled around, and oh my god, the onslaught of games in the eShop continues. Capcom, after me foolishly deciding to buy Street Fighter 2 again for $40, decided to double dip and release the 30th year anniversary collection with much more Street Fighter this time to make it actually worth the price. Pokemon Quest released and I never played it. How about that? Now on to the big boys. Now this is when the Portapalooza started for me. I did get Hyrule Warriors, uh, but I didn't get all the DLC for it on the Wii U. Uh, it was fun. I'm somewhat of still of a Warriors, like blah, blah, blah. it's hard to really say it uh, because they've done the same thing for so long, Koei Tecmo but I am for the most part still a Warriors fan. It's something great about just turning your brain off and just button mashing until you win. Uh, Hyrule Warriors added a lot of value. There was a lot of passion put into it and I highly recommend, even at $60, I recommend this game heavily, even though I've already purchased it. Dunk on Tropical Freeze, this one, I had never got to experience on the Wii U. Uh, I was actually thinking about getting it for the, the, the because it became a Nintendo Selects, which means it was going to be $20 on the Wii U. Uh, by, by that time, the Nintendo Switch rolled around, and I honestly thought, hey, the Wii U did so bad, there's a good chance they're going to bring it over. And that's exactly what they did. They brought it over. And I got to say, fantastic game, phenomenal game. I don't think it even needs me to say that. If you haven't gotten this game, if you haven't experienced on the Wii U like a lot of people haven't, it's a masterful game. It's arguably one of the best, if not the best, 3D platformer ever released. And that's a very lofty statement. I'd be glad for you to see it yourself. Diverse locations, very difficult, very challenging, very fun. So much replayability. Please go get this game. Nintendo, though, you should be ashamed for 60 bucks. I know what time it is. That, that's kind of shameful. Ooh, I can't forget Pure Electric Love. <laughs> I'm June had rolled around and Nintendo finally got his sweet taste of Fortnite. The fuck you say to me, you little Paladins also came to the Switch because Blizzard and Activision are too inept to bring over Overwatch. We got Fallout Shelter. Yeah, that's all I really got to say. We got Fallout Shelter. Shelter. The fuck you say to me, you little Sushi Striker arrived too, and I gotta say, I, the game was very ambitious for what it was. It looks like a very cutesy indie platformer. I mean, a platformer, what am I saying? A little uh, matchup game. How did I get platformer? <laughs> but for me, I just couldn't justify the price tag to it for it. You wanted me to pay 45 bucks for something that's really started to get repetitive after a while. I, I'm completely fine on that, but I'm proud of you for trying though. Yeast of Lock Ramosa released this, this or I guess that month and uh, I wish I could have played it. I've never gotten around to it. I probably never will, but this is the kind of action RPG I like. I like the more interactive version, not necessarily what Xenoblade Chronicles brought to the table. Ah, look, there's Luminous, and my life is actually stolen from me. Luminous is a fantastic game that will easily steal hours upon hours away from you if you let it. We also got Mario Tennis Aces that month. Fun, but definitely lacking. 
Octo Expansion for Splatoon 2 released this month, and I can't wait to get to that. I have it, and I just haven't gotten around to it. There's just so many things to do, and I'm pretty sure this is a running theme. You're probably sick of me saying it. Wolfenstein 2 released, and I gotta say, it's a shame that this game didn't sell more uh, like its predecessor, Doom. But it's great to see it on the Switch. If you haven't gotten it already, catch it at a good price on sale, maybe like $35, and I think it's well worth it. You wanna kill a nazi? A nazi nazi crazy? Also, I have to mention, I don't like Activision. Why am I saying that? Oh, because Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy released this month. Yes, it's a it's a nice little game. It's, it's not the best game. The, the camera angle is just something that's really hard for me if you take away the nostalgia feel from it. But the fact that this game only made it because one of the developers liked the Switch and actually tried to port the a level over and after that they ported the rest of it over. If it wasn't for that one developer, this game would never be on the Switch. Activision, I'm not a fan of you. For obvious reasons. We've got me to have me to have me to have, to have money. Donkey Kong Adventure for the Mario Plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle released this month and it's nice to see that that game gets some extra DLC added. And from the looks of it, I think it's very worth it. It's very, very, very worth it. I think this is a underappreciated game. Also, don't forget this guy. He's a saint. Now, July, we finally get Octopath Traveler. We got a little taste of Hello Neighbor. Toad Treasure Tracker released for 40 bucks, which I don't know how I feel about that. It feels shoehorned in. And the fact that Toad moves like a turd sliding is not the best thing to me, but I can understand the appeal to it. Uh, if you are into those puzzly kind of games, then this is definitely up your alley. Mega Man Legacy Collection released and Capcom is too cheap to put retro games on a cartridge. If I'm not mistaken, around this time, the Nintendo decided to go with the let's release 20 to 30 games a week on the Switch. So yeah, I think that's a good idea. Shovelware. August rolled around and I did want to keep this direct free other than the first Nintendo Switch Direct, but I gotta say, August, the Smash Direct, arguably to me, is the best Smash Direct ever. It was so packed beginning to end and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It really made me excited for Smash Bros. At first I was lukewarm about it, uh, even past the whole everyone is here, but this one, King K. Rule, the Belmonts, even, you know, even Daisy. Daisy. In your face, Waluigi. It was a very fantastic direct. It was so good. The, the reveals were so nice. Monster Hunter 4 for the DS. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. I think I had something in my throat. Uh, Monster Hunter generations not for generations it's for released for the switch you cheap. previously in japan of course capcom you know how we do capcom <laughs> capcom it released in the u.s this time so now you can understand what you were doing instead of having to port it and having no idea how to read japanese and oh <laughs> look at that i almost missed it night trap released this month and it's very funny to see a game that is in part responsible for the maturity rating system that we have, the ESRB, uh, through its controversial content, uh, made it to the Nintendo Switch, so, neat. Well, well, if it isn't our old friend... September started up and we got some neat little releases here and there. We got Bro Force, Hyper Light Drifter, which if you haven't gotten it, definitely you should get it. Don't even take it from me, just all the reviews speak for itself. You've got Dusk releasing on the Nintendo Switch and hey, if you want to indulge your inner furry, why not? Final Fantasy XV Pocket Edition also released on the Nintendo Switch just to make me highly disappointed. Now this one's a bit controversial to me because I understand that Square did try to somewhat get the original Final Fantasy XV on the Nintendo Switch, but it didn't necessarily work out that way. They could do a half step, but seeing how much time has passed, uh, they probably feel like it's not even worth it. So they just plop the uh, Pocket Edition on there. What gets me though, what gets me though is they sell the pocket edition for around $30, but you can get the original, much better looking one 
on PS4 for like ten to fifteen dollars, and then they turn around and sell the pocket edition for thirty dollars on the same consoles. Like, okay, good job, Square. Good job. Capcom, who you know I'm not the biggest fan of, released the bundles this year, the beat 'em up bundle, and I am just waiting on it to go on sale. I really want it. I, I'm not gonna lie to beat 'em ups are my weakness. We got another Nintendo Labo this month because, hey, what's a party without another piece of $70 cardboard? A game that I am really interested in and I really enjoyed the little time that I played it. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torn of the Golden Country. This is a sleeper hit. This is it's supposed to be DLC, but it's big enough to stand as a, as a standalone game. And if you haven't tried it, I think it's well worth it. I think you can play this and then if you are interested and you enjoy it enough, you can go back and play Xenoblade Chronicles 2 to understand what happens in the story. And you probably will like it. You probably will. Or you won't. You may hate RPG. Capture girls and then and, and then they refer to you as their master. So this is weirdo shit. Then you got Towerfall, South Park Stick of Truth, Dragon Ball Fighter C, which no, I am not port begging for. And I'm glad you're here. Undertale came out this month, and one of the best things to ever come from Nintendo, Nintendo Switch Online, came out this month. Two fantastic effects. <laughs> NBA 2K19 released this month. <laughs> October skeeted around, and there was a couple of noticeable titles in this bunch. Dark Souls finally released after being delayed. I was lucky enough to get it for like $29 straight up off of Amazon, and for me to have never really just jumped into Dark Souls, this is a good catch for me. This is very good. And the fact that I'm not like a massive fan of it, I'm not really missing much. Warriors Orochi 4 slid in on the radar and completely disappeared. Gal Metal, which was this band game that I really wanted to try, came in and I, one day I'm going to try it. One day I'm really going to try it. I really love the way that this game looked. Oh, look at that, more anime. My Hero Wants Justice. This came in, I was excited when it was announced because I was really starting to get into My Hero Academia. But when I played the game, it was okay. It wasn't a bad game. It's a decent game, but there's really not much to keep you playing long after. The Sky of One being released was a decent catch, although... The characters in this game have very questionable outfit choices with very questionable age insinuation. Mega Man 11 also released. Eh, good game. The big release though for me this month was Mario Party and I was really excited to see that Super Mario Party uh, was more of a return to form for the party franchise. Although really just four boards Nintendo, you, you really could only just come with four boards really, really. Really? You cheap! Starlink Battle for Atlas also released this month. This game I didn't actually get until much later in the year. Fortunately, I ended up getting it on sale for $30, so that was a neat buy. And I know it's, it's controversial. I know that the game feels pretty much empty, uh, but I'm a sucker for exploration, namely space exploration. So $30, space exploration, Star Fox, I'm a sucker for that too, definitely. Then, of course, you got Windjammers and Guacamelee. Overall, it was a pretty good time. October was pretty nice. November, this is the Pokemon month. The month of Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. I sometimes forget I had this game. Now, I know with the recent developments of Pokemon Sword and Shield that these games are easily forgettable, but it was a really nice trip to go back to the Johto region. I think as far as Game Freak is concerned, a 3D remake of Pokemon Yellow was a fantastic idea. I did have some gripes with it. I would have liked more of a battle as far as battling like random encounters. Well, not necessarily random encounters because that's the part that I actually liked about Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, but just battling wild Pokemon. I, I would have liked them more instead of just catching them. Another thing that I am also missing and I pray that they bring it to Pokemon Sword and Shield is the removal of random encounters. I like to see like, hey, do I want to fight this Pokemon? Yeah, I want to fight it. Like, if you see, like, a rare Pokemon show up, you're going to rush toward the thing with every bit of life that you have in you. And by life, I mean as quick as that, uh, that button can push. Diablo 3 released, and this is a game that I've really been wanting, 
but life has prevented me from getting it. At some point, I'm going to get it. I've seen it go on sale for like $40 to $45. I think it's a good deal at $40. Bucks. Civ 6 made an appearance, and man, I really want to visit Gandhi again. Gandhi is my favorite part of this game for obvious reasons, if you are familiar with Civ the Civilization games. Ark Survival released in... <laughs> whoops! Oh, look, we also got YouTube too. What the hell took you so long? And then we enter in to December. Now, this is what we've been playing for. The Nintendo Switch, as of the majority of 2018, it really felt like a dry spell. There felt like not much came out. It was a bunch of ports, a bunch of rehashes, a bunch of games just being brought over as filler. But it would all make up for it with this. Santa Tracker. Hell yeah, this is what I've been waiting for all year. Ooh. Just kidding. Come back here. I, I need my viewers. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate finally, after such a long wait, finally released. And the game is exactly how you would expect it. Hey. Amazing. The characters, the roster, the gameplay, the balancing, the level of detail, the stages, the music. Oh my God. It's so much packed into a $60 title. Sakurai is a madman. Monster Boy and Katamari Damacy Reroll have to definitely win the awards for most unfortunate games released in the year. Releasing around time that Super Smash Bros. Ultimate released a highly anticipated game. This is very unfortunate for games that I really feel like are underappreciated. January 2019 rolls around and developers pretty much have the consensus that Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is out, so there's really no point in releasing a game right now. And I understand that. Nintendo, on the other hand, is like, you know what we should do? Re-release another $60 port. Yes, yeah, Super Mario Bros. Wii U Deluxe came out to the astonishing price of $60, and it's new Super Mario Bros., but portable. But it was already portable. up -res portable. What do you want from me? I didn't make this game. I didn't port this game. I got nothing. Now granted, this game does come with a DLC that was originally made for the Wii U, so it's not necessarily a bad thing, but I think this game would have sat much prettier at $40. Though I see this game in the next year or so becoming a Nintendo Select, maybe the first for the Switch. Fitness Boxing seemed to gain a lot of popularity. Hopefully we'll get Fitness Boxing Girl as an echo for Wii Fit Trainer. I think that'd be pretty neat. We also ended up getting No More Heroes, Travis Strikes Again on a budget. This is a game that I have, and I gotta say, I love the aesthetics. I'm a big fan of Suda51 and Grasshopper, and it's really nice to see them come back in one way or another. I'm not the biggest fan of the looks and the way that the gameplay looks, but I'm hoping, hoping that this is done well enough to merit a sequel to No More Heroes 3. We really need it. Also, Travis for Smash. February rolled around, and there was a couple of games that are of importance to me. Wargroove is one which looks like a pretty neat version of Advance Wars. I really miss Advance Wars, Nintendo. If you ever hear this, please bring Nintendo Advance Wars back. Ape Out, which looks like a very interesting game, ended up hitting the scene as well. Toby Fox ended up releasing Deltarune Chapter 1 with the other ones being charged. I have no idea how much it's going to be for in the future, but Deltarune Chapter 1 is free, so good on you, Toby. Good on you. Nintendo also saw the Battle Royale craze and was like, you know what? All these shooters, all these blasters, all these Battle Royales, you know what we should do? Tetris Battle Royale. And I've got to admit, as much as I harp on it, it's pretty fun. It's And it's free, so what can you say to that? And at the time of this recording, Nintendo had a direct and we got Super Mario Maker 2. I, whew, that's gonna be fun, on a bun. We ended up eventually getting announced Pokemon Sword and Shield. Ubisoft decided to throw Assassin's Creed 3 on there. Astral Chain looks pretty neat, but give me Bayonetta 3. And after all the talk, the trailers, and the tax fraud memes, Yoshi's Crafted World finally made it onto the Nintendo Switch. In all fairness, after playing it, it's a really cool, really chill game. To me, it has the same problems as Kirby's Star Allies, being the fact that it just feels really easy. But at the same time, it's not necessarily a bad thing. You can have a game that can stomp your skull in, or you can have a game that's really fun and chill. It's just teach their own. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not anything that's particularly up my alley. I would like Yoshi's Crafted World to have had a bit more challenge 
challenge, but it, it's not, it's not a bad game. If you want to just sit back, relax, keep your feet up, and just hang out with Yoshi for a bit, kind of let your stress kind of melt away, then I think it's the game for you. I, I think it's a really solid game. Dark has ended up coming out as a fantastic port. Kudos on UTH Nordic. Ninja Theory ended up arriving with Hellblade, showing other developers once again, look, either say that you are going to put your game on a Switch or just don't. Don't lie and be like, oh, the Switch is not powerful enough. I smell bullshit. By the time of this recording, Link's Awakening had been announced for the Nintendo Switch as well. I am going to do a video on my thoughts on that in particular, but I am interested to see what they're going to do with the game. It's nice that they're doing a re-release for such a dated, it's dated, but it's a fun game. You should check it out. Check out the old one before the new one comes out. I think you'll enjoy it. We've also got an overly pushed Dragon Quest title on the horizon, and even more fantastic titles that I can't mention that are coming down the line. You will be amazed this year. As far as I know. Who knows? I don't know anything. And I have to say it again. Cuphead coming to the Nintendo Switch. Metroid Prime Trilogy is on the way to no one's surprise. And it's also bringing along Persona 5. You know it's coming. It's coming. Come on. If I were to wrap up this insanely long video between parts one and parts two, we need an eShop overhaul. And the eShop is coming, becoming a bit of a mess. And by becoming, I mean it already is. We need to be able to organize games and say have like a, a rating system in there so we can really re weed out all of the shovelware versus the actual good games in there, the actual attempts, because I don't need to have basketball next to Hollow Knight. That's that's just gross. The store also needs music. As I've mentioned before, if you can't think of any music Nintendo, which as creative as you are, I don't see why you can't, then just use the download music that you use in your YouTube videos. It's a great thing for the store. It's very simple. It's very minimalistic. It doesn't really take away from the experience. It's like a nice shopping thing. Like just, just do it. Like I don't, I don't understand what's taking you so long to implement this. This, this should have been long done. Another thing I would say, internet browser. That's a no-brainer. Netflix. Come on, Nintendo. What are you doing? Add folders. Uh, again, I can't stress it enough. Better, better organization. Uh, kill the Switch Touch too. That, that, that needs to go. The fact that. Just because you're a Nintendo fan, I, and I understand. I understand that cartridges are more expensive than, than disc at this point, but the Switch Tech is ridiculous. It, it really is. There's, there's really no excuse. Even because the Switch Tech even, tax even goes over to digital titles, and Capcom is milking the crap out of it. And Capcom, you definitely need to chill with that. You don't need to sit here and just charge Switch owners more just because you can. That's what it's coming down to. It. It's not like a, a cost of doing business or anything like that with it. You're just charging the Switch owners more because you feel like you can get away with it. And that's something that needs to stop. I would say that 2017 would go down as the greatest launch lineup for any particular console. Now, I could be wrong. I, I really could be. But the fact that you see Mario and Zelda in the same year it's just, that's bonkers when you sit back and think about it. It's fine and it's settled in now. You've had two years to digest these games and they are even coming back in VR, which is, it's, it's pretty incredible. It's not like the greatest thing, like I'm going to lose my mind over it, but it's pretty awesome. But I'll just say regardless that you had all those heavy heaters, heavy heaters, uh, heavy hitters each month. And it is, it, it was just amazing. Like we were spoiled by it. We were so spoiled, in fact, that it made 2018 seem like crap, which it kind of was. It, it felt it felt empty. It felt like I'm guessing that Nintendo knew that Pokemans and Ubertas bros were going to save them. Uh, they look they look at the sales numbers and holy shit, that that actually did save them. I feel like new 2019 is going to be a hell of a year towards the middle and the end of it as more studios start to realize the capability of the switch. That is it. That is the end of the two year retrospective of all the different games that I have came across on Nintendo Switch. And hmm, it feels really good to finally finish this series. I'm done and done. I can put it down hours upon hours upon hours of work putting this video together. And hmm, it does. It feels really good. 